And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Dreamscape, Build Your Dreams. This is from David Arsalus. I haven't seen him make a game actually in several years. Um, in the past, he has uh, both designed his games and did the art and graphic design. Uh, haven't always been a big fan of his stuff, but I like the idea of this one. I like the idea of dreams and the theme of it. In this one, you're building your dreams, trying to match you're building patterns, trying to match those patterns. Here's how it plays. In this game, there are six locations on the board. Uh, that each of them is numbered. So here we have Clockwork Golem, Eternal Summer Lake, that's the kind of dream I want to have, and the king of dreams, etc. You're going to be handing out these initiative tokens, and players are going to start in the spot. This is where your dreamer is going to be that starts in the spot that matches your initiative number. At the end of every round, you're going to hand out these initiatives based on how low you are. So if you're in six, you're going to go fourth, probably, unless someone else is in six, too, and you'll go first if you're in number one, probably. So on a player's turn, they have four action points, and you can spend these and do different things in any order. So what can you do with your action points? Two things, you can move. You can move to an adjacent location, and then the other thing you do is you can collect dream shards. You always start from where the hand is, and so you collect them. So let's say, before my action, I go one, two, three, and four. I can collect all three of these. When I collect them, I'm going to put them on my own board here in my hands. You can only have two of one color, so I, can, I have two whites, I can't collect the third white. The good news is you can also, in this example, I, can, I now have a free movement. I can move from here to here. Why? Because each spot has a key position, and this one, the key position is brown. And since I have a brown, I can now move to that spot for free. In fact, I can move here because that kid's key position is also brown. So that's a free thing you can do, doesn't cost an action point. Another free thing you can do, once per round, you can use the special ability of the location you're in. And you just show that by flipping over your initiative token to show that you used it. There are different things. Here, draw a dream shard from the bag. Here, draw some cards. Uh, now, cards, everyone's gonna start with a card. What you're trying to do is you're trying to build these formations on your board. It's going to give you this many points at the end of the game. If you don't do it, you will lose five points. And there are three piles of these cards in the game. And you'll be able to draw like this one here is 19 points, but you can see it requires a very specific setup. It also requires you to have your sleepwalker on one of the tiles here. So let's talk about building on your board. After everyone has gotten moved and gotten their their uh, dream shards you can your first one you place right here in the middle in the bottom and after the and well, as soon as you do you move your dude onto it after that you place them adjacent like this now each one that you place is going to do various things there's uh, their water and earth and grass and mountains it's, what you can spend a white one anytime you want to move your guy onto the board and as you put more and more of these out here, and you can put one on top of another one, uh, two is the most you have, the rules are you can put this on top of an empty one. You can also discard a green one if you want to, to put a tree on top of something, which again might be needed to match the different things that you have here. You can take one of these and put it on a card to use the special ability of that card, in this case, uh, drawing from the bag some of these tokens. And that's also a way to store it from turn to turn. Otherwise, each turn you must put out all the ones in your hands or discard them. So there's special abilities. If you have two grays on top of each other and you move your guy on top of that, you can get two points. If you move on water, you get a point. Every time you build a tree, you get one point for every tree you have. If you, you can move on to brown for free, it makes movement faster. And like I said, you can discard greens to get trees. You can discard whites to move on the board. That's pretty much it. When you complete one of these cards, you just show that you've done it, you flip it over, you still have the special ability that you can use with the card, and you're gonna get those points at the end. 
Other points that you'll be getting at the end, you'll be drawing some tiles from the bag, and so you'll be trying to accomplish these goals if you accomplish the goals that are on these, and there's all sorts of goals that are included with the game. So for example, the most completed dream cards, this one here, the least empty spaces, this one here, the most slots with only one shard, and it has to be green. You, this is randomly chosen at the beginning of the game. And if you accomplish these, everyone who accomplishes them gets points. There are six rounds in the game. After six rounds, you score these, plus points people have gotten for completing their cards, minus points for cards you didn't complete, and whoever has the most cards is the winner of the game. There's a few other rules in the game where you can discard two of the same color to take one that you need from the bag, etc. And there's different powers, like I said, at the locations. There's also nightmare rules where you'll have these uh, nightmare shards in there, and it'll be a king of dreams, a nightmare guy moving around the board. And so this will, this makes the game a little bit harder, actually. Uh, but these can be added in. The artwork is pretty cool in the game. One of the things I like in this game, I thought that was pretty neat, was you'll like see these two things here. So we have Dream Harvesters and Eternal Summer Lakes. And then the cards here on Dreamscapes uh, show those two things. And then on the board itself, it shows them combined together. I don't know, that's kind of a neat thing. And then the artwork on the cards, I guess these are the weird dreams that you have. Spring Lakes, Rocky Island, Bright Sparkling Source, Castaway. I don't mind the art at all. They're a little bit whimsical, and they're kind of dreams that you have. So that works well. The everything else, just wooden pieces, wooden trees, wooden discs, etc. Um, it's, it's fine. It's uh, decent. The quality of the cards and the tiles is good. The, the components are fine. Ah, talk about a game that's just... Uh, the dreaming theme is cool. Where is it in this game? It's just not there. Yes, you're just collecting discs and putting them on a board in different patterns. Here's the deal. This game, this genre, this thing is being done to death at this point. Collect stuff, put it into a pattern. You know, find this exact pattern and you get points. Uh, sometimes it's done on a shared board. In this particular game, it's done on your board. So this game is all about moving your dreamer around the board and collecting stuff, which is kind of just randomly there. At the beginning of each round, you fill up the discs and stuff from the bag. And there's a, a special ability. You can switch the order of the discs. You can you know, throw some back in the bag to get the one you want. But at the end of the day, you're kind of stuck with what's out there. So you move, try to grab the best stuff that will match the card you have. It's, it's, it's just very obvious, kind of, oh, I need these things. There they are, I'll go for them. Oh, Susan went before me, she took the stuff I wanted. I guess I'll go here then. I never felt like the game was that fascinating. And then these big cards, the ones that require a lot of stuff, they're really hard to do. They give you a lot of points, but so the game has this whole, you draw six of them and keep one. That's fine, I guess. And so you pick the one that's closest to what your pattern already is on the board. And then you just try to accomplish it. And then the game has, you know, it just has a bunch of these little weird rules. Okay, so brown's what you move. And, and when you move on water, you get a point. And none of them make a lot of sense. And none of them seem to matter. At the end of the game, at the, at the end of the day, Dreamscape is boring. Like, really boring. I, mean, I guess, I mean, again, caveat to me and the people I played with. It's just that you kind of move around, use a special ability, but there's not a lot you're doing. You're moving, picking up a few discs, and using one special ability. Then you figure out who has initiative, you then put the stuff here, and maybe you move around here, you get some points. So there's not a ton of decisions, but there's a little bit of busy work and a little bit of follow all these rules in order. To the end of the day, you're just building patterns. And there's so many other games, they said, that build patterns, and you can build those faster. I'll do this, 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 build a pattern. Do this, 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 build a pattern. I just can't see this one taking off. I like the artwork, I like the theme. Unfortunately, it means nothing for the game. So if that's the case, then the game better shine. And here it's kind of like, meh. It's, that's, that's just where I'm at. So build your dreams is a cool tagline. It just has nothing to do with the game. I don't know, even for people who like this style of game, you know, the, you know, you have four action points and getting stuff. Again, I feel like there's other things, and this game never seems like it gives you enough time to, for
forgive me, fulfill your dreams. I, I want to complete these cards. Yeah, you're going to complete a few of them, not too many of them at all. And it just seems like the game never gets enough chugging along to get going. And then the one module the thing comes with is like, hey, we'll make it harder. Harder? It's already kind of a pain to, you know, complete these dreams. So this one, unfortunately, is a pass for me. Dice Tower Judgment, boring.